Hello, this is Heather Dawn again. You can still find me at Twitter at HDawnX. I also write for www.astronomy-wise.com which is now available to view, which is fantastic news. It's such a fantastic site and I'm looking forward to you all going and having a log on there and checking out the types of articles that we write about. My most recent article was about time travel and the importance of space exploration. I'm doing this video today to discuss 10 of the very exciting exoplanets that have been discovered since 1995 when we started looking at exoplanets through the Kepler telescope um, and we've since discovered over 800 more planets. Now please excuse me today because I've got a few notes here because I want to get all my facts right. I do not want to get my information wrong. Um, I don't think anyone would. So the first one I'd like to discuss is Osiris. Now Osiris is an evaporating planet which is extremely close to its sun. Its sun is cooler than ours. It is so close that it looks like a comet. And it's yeah, it's just evaporating so I mean, it's just basically being pulled and tugged at by its planet star and that is trying to take and, and just swallow up this planet. So, poor Osiris, that, that's not going to have a very good, um, a good end. Obviously no civilization on that one. WASP-12b is so close to its parent star that it is in space hell. It is a gas giant. 1.5 times the size of Jupiter. It is 2,200 degrees Celsius, or that's 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It orbits closer than any other planet that we know of to its star. This is a very exciting planet, probably one of a, a lady's favourite. The next one that I'm about to discuss is called the Diamond Planet. It used to be made of carbon, but there is this pulsar star orbiting so close that the ultra high pressure has turned it into an extremely large diamond. I remember reading about it in a magazine and I just thought, wow, I'd love to see that up close. How amazing must that view be? This isn't a real diamond, by the way. If it was, I wouldn't be sat here doing a YouTube video in my uh, living room, but. Yeah, this is just a little example. <laughs> so yeah, it's crystallised into, into diamond. Um, Mephusia is the oldest known exoplanet to date. It is 12.7 billion years old, which has made certain scientists and astronomers wonder how early life actually started and maybe we've got it wrong. You know, it's, it suggests that life could have developed much sooner than, than we know that it has. Tatuni is, um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Tatuni is an exoplanet that's been named after Luke Skywalker's home planet. Um, it is very, very close to its sun and it's made its way close to its sun through gravitational waves and it's got three stars um, and that's a hot Jupiter. Our Jupiter is where we, we fathom it should be and rotating the sun. Now some hot Jupiters, they kind of are so heavy and dense that the gravitational wave that they form kind of makes them surf, if you like, towards the parent star and um, bringing them into, really close to it uh, and starting to evaporate, similar to uh, Wasp B. The cloud, the cloud exoplanet is the puffiest planet that we know of. It's actually got an atmosphere. It's bigger than Jupiter. But the very strange thing is, it could actually float on one of Earth's oceans, given, given the, the size differentiation. Um, so yeah, that is very strange that you can have such a huge body, yet it could float on water. Um, so it's just so, everything is so incredible that's going on out there in the universe. Um, now Waterworld JG1214b is a rocky world similar to Earth. 
it's rich in water and that's got an atmosphere. But apparently, as far as we can tell and what we have detected, is it's covered in water. Very, very deep oceans. Um, so I'm not kind of sure what life would grow on there, whether plants would raise from the bed of the ocean and kind of live on the surface and feed off the sunlight, or whether it'd be vastly, immensely filled with strange water creatures. Um, but there's certainly no land on there as far as we're aware at the moment in time. The Enigma, also known as, and I will just have to read this from my paper, hit 13044B survived its star turning into a red giant and apparently its original originally came from another galaxy and has been taken in by this star. So that's quite an interesting one. Now my favourite, and it was in the news recently, and I remember watching it on Channel 4, is um, Galee's 581D. Now that's a super earth. It's eight times the size of our earth. Um, so a huge mass living in the Goldilocks zone. I think recently we discovered that its rotation wouldn't be the same as earth so it's not constantly spinning. Um, but it is a huge mega super giant. And I bought a magazine the other day, Space, and in there it was that we've discovered loads, not not hundreds, but quite a lot of Earth-like planets in the Goldilocks zone. That's really exciting. I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes open for future developments on those. Um, so very exciting. I hope that you will maybe research some of the planets that I've mentioned and go out there to look for some more. I'm going to hang on to my fake diamond and um, and and think about planet planet diamond, which is very exciting. Um, but yeah, definitely the Earth-like planets are the ones that I'm going to be looking for um, leading up to the future. My new article was out today. I'll just add that in. Um, time travel and the importance of space exploration, and you can find that on the homepage of www.astronomy dashwise.com. I've been Heather Dawn. You've hopefully been my uh, viewer that's enjoyed a little bit of what I've discussed today and I will hopefully see you next week to discuss black holes. Thank you.